happens when trucks and cars get old. You see what's going on here? Damn, we gotta get that out of there. Is that just like one of those clips for a rubber? It's just a clip that holds it on there, but we were sanding it and it busted. $35. Mofo. I'm glad both of them didn't break. Yeah, no shit. So we gotta replace that. But what we're doing here is this guy here is uh, basically giving his truck a facelift. Now when I say a facelift, come on up here. Doors unlocked. Okay. Uh, on these early Fords and Chevys and any other truck with a certain particular color, what happens is the paint starts fading, especially if you park it in the exact same spot every day. Because the sun will sit on that one spot all the time and your truck will never move around. That's what actually usually causes this or parking under a tree am i correct yep all right so contamination will happen and paint will start peeling so what we're doing is we're uh giving his truck a facelift and we got to repaint the whole hood we got to do the whole top of it and while we were at it now another thing that i want to tell you that i do a lot of people don't do is especially on these type of colors here this paint has a lot of metallic in it and what a lot of people do they'll just paint the hood only and be done with it what I do to make sure it's a professional job is I blend the paint into the fenders because it irritates the shit out of me when you see a car going down the highway and it looks like three or four different colors because they only painted this panel here they painted that panel there blah 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 <laughs> and many of the body shop girl never even recognized that till 20 years ago when I met her and she started actually working here and then on the way home and on the way to work I had to hear all the way there and all the way back oh look at that shitty paint job oh look at that look that paint doesn't match this paint doesn't match do you remember that yes I used to do that all the time every well, day that's because I was just learning all right and it was new so, and exciting yeah so <laughs> Always remember, if you're going to do something, do it the right way. And the right way to actually paint that hood the same color as this truck, you have to blend into these fenders. And what we'll probably do is, it looks like there might be a little fade action going on on the top of that fender anyway. See that right there? Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and do that just to make sure. And that's another thing is we're covering our ass. So naturally, this guy doesn't live in his own fortress, and he lives out in the real world. And when you live in the real world, shit's going to happen. And what happened right here, if many can come over here, um, someone was trying to shoot his window out. Thank God they missed and hit this, because that window right there probably costs about 500 bucks to replace. That's a factory tinted piece of glass. Um, I bought a brand new truck one time, and it had the back windows were tinted. And we went to the movies the night that we bought it. And when I came out, that window was busted, and at that time it cost me $350. You remember that? I do remember that. Manny was freaking out. She thought somebody blew our truck up, whatever. But So, uh, while we're in the process of doing this, the owner asked me to go ahead and fix this little dent right here. Now, the situation is, is to fix that dent, okay, we're going to have to fill that in. And the real deal is, is we want to keep that as contaminated or condensed, I mean, contained as possible. We want to condense it down to the smallest dent that we can do. And if I'm looking at it, if many could come over here and kind of get the camera on that, you can kind of get, you can see where the dent is. It's way up here. Do you see that? Can you see the reflection of the light, how it kind of makes it? So it looks like a little ding. But more, the dents are usually three times the size of what you're looking at. So what we're going to do is all of the body work we do on this is going to be by hand. We're not using any power tools because we need to keep this condensed down, contained, uh, contaminated, whatever you want to call it, into one little space. Because once again, I was telling you about blending the paint. I'm talking about two different color panels here. When I paint that... I'm going to have to blend the paint right here. You understand what I'm saying, Manny? Right, just on right. the Right, I don't want to go past this line, and I don't want to go past that line, because what's going to happen? You're going to be painting the whole truck just You're going to look up here and say, oh, look at that. That looks weird. Why is it a different color right here, but it's the same color there? All right, and then you're going to have a situation that it's not done right. So what we're going to do to start this out 
is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm taking a piece of 80 grit. That's all I'm using. I'm not going to use my grinder. I ain't going to do nothing. And I'm going to feather that paint out and clean that dent out. Now, I forgot to tell you, this was a BB that hit that. Oh, did I already tell you that about the glass? It's okay. Shooting out, yeah. So we're just going to take our thumb and we're just going to rough that up. And what I'm doing, I'm feathering out the paint around the edges, and I'm also roughing up everything around it. Because we need to have our filler stick onto this paint. So, there we go. That's all we're doing. And basically what we're doing is we are fixing a dent just like we would if it was a collision job. The only difference is, is we're doing it by hand. And one more thing you want to make sure is that the dent is cleaned out thoroughly and get all the contamination out. So, remember I told you it's probably about three times its size. If you look right here, you can see how big that dent is just by the way it feathered out. Because that's where, when you see the feather uh, look on a dent, that's how big it is. All right, because you're actually sanding it and then it starts feathering it out when it gets flat. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's basically how big our dent really is in real life. Let's go over there. I'm going to show you how to mix the Bondo that we're going to use on this little dent. It's a special mix that's going to make it flow out and we should only have to fill it maybe two times maximum and that's only if I don't get it on the first time. Welcome to DIY. Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So what we're going to do is, of course, we're going to get a Bondo spreader right here. And we're going to make sure that's a nice, clean Bondo spreader. Now, many of the Body Shop Girl does it a little bit different. Um, she would actually use a razor blade. And we might do that on the second coat, but on this first coat, we won't do that. And once again, remember the word condense or contained, uh, we're trying to make it a contained situation. So always look at the small picture on this one, not the big picture, if that made any sense. What I'm doing here, I took my Dynalite Bondo. I'm going to go ahead and take my polyester filler, and I'm going to mix the two together. Now what that's going to do, that's going to create a very creamy and flowing uh, filler that I need. Now you can also go the expensive route and go buy yourself some Rage Evercoat Bondo that costs you $80 a gallon. Uh, but this here is actually the same thing. This is how it's mixed. This is what it's made of. It's just Bondo with this mixed in it. Um, I'm telling you how to save money. And then you're going to take your hardener and depending on the weather is how much hardener you're going to use. If it's real hot outside you don't want to use a lot of hardener. If it's average temperature or below, you're going to use more hardener. The colder it is, the more hardener you're going to use, but there's always a limit to how much hardener you can use because if you put too much in there, then what's going to happen? It makes it crumbly. And it makes it crumbly. It'll never dry properly, and you need to gouge it all out, and you have to start over, and then you're really screwed up. So always practice your technique on hardener and how much you should use and pay very close attention to that. So if you look right there, we got our three layers. We got our Bondo, we got our polyester filler, and then of course we got our hardener. We're going to go ahead and mix that up. And then once we have our Bondo or our filler mixed up, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to take the corner of my Bondo 
uh, spreader. And this is where it gets kind of tricky. Uh, you know what? We're going to go ahead and do what Mini does. And look what uh, I just happened to find right here. Okay? Because we want to keep this contaminated. So, Contained. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're going to use a razor blade. Do you see what I'm doing there? I'm using that razor blade and I'm keeping it contained into a small spot. But I'm not pressing really hard. And the reason I'm not is I want to overfill it. I want to overfill it. Now the first push that I did, I pushed it in there. But then what we're doing here is we're keeping it contained. Now I'm using my razor blade uh, to see how we're doing that. I'm feathering out that edge right there because I don't want to have to sand a lot of Bondo off. So it's very important to keep it contained just like many would do. Now Minnie's more of a professional using this type of a tool than I am. Um, it irritates me because I got big hands and she's a lot better at it and you can see why. Look at the mess it makes. But uh, this is how many would actually do it. Am I right? Yeah. You that actually... way, yeah. I have more control using that little razor blade. That way I don't get it everywhere because you don't want to get it And everywhere. another thing I want everybody to pay attention is you can see um, just by putting the Bondo onto the vehicle you can see that um, we've already created a bigger spot and our goal is not to go below that line there so um, it looks like it is on there the way that we want it I want to put a little bit more right in the center because this is the real trick here is to build up the center of your dent and feather the edges out just like that and I should have let Minnie make this video because she's actually better at it than I am when it comes to this well, type a, of a repair. It's a tricky situation. Yes, it is. <sighs> okay, so, and if you noticed, I'm still working with my Bondo. It hasn't dried yet, and that's the way that you want to mix it. So, I'm going to bring it like this, and I'm going to get rid of that Bondo right there. All right, so, now what we've done is we filled our den in. We've kept it contained we've kept it contained and now what we'll do to let that dry and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you a technique of how to sand something like that to keep it even more contained where all we're doing is painting this little spot here instead of this spot here all right now that our filler is dry you can see that right here what we're going to do to contain that area and sand that is we're going to take these right here. Now what these are, these are pieces of a paint stick that I cut to use as a miniature sanding block. So I got my roll of 80 grit here. We're going to go ahead and tear a piece off because we're not going to use 36 grit on this. The most coarsest sandpaper we want to use is 80 grit. We're going to come over here and we're going to go ahead and tear a piece of that off just like this. And you have to use the DA paper that's a sticky backing paper. Very important. Very, very important. So I'm using my paint stick, and then I'm going to stick that on there just like that. And I kind of want this little flappy edge here. You see that edge we got that's flapping around? I want that because that's actually going to help us feather out all the edges. Now, another thing I want is I want a nice sharp edge right here. So make sure you wrap your paper on there very, very tight, as you can see. And the reason I want that edge, uh, just to show you before I start, is I don't want to go past this line. Remember I was telling you about that, this body line? So, when we sand this, we're going to keep that, uh, we're going to keep all that contained in the smallest area possible. And we're just going to take our time and start sanding away. Now another way that we can make our sanding block is we're still going to use our little uh, paint stick and then we're going to go ahead and lay it on our sandpaper just like this. So we're going to, let's go ahead and put it yeah, like that right there. And then what we'll do now, uh, this actually, this little invention here, you're actually going to use more sandpaper doing it this way, but sometimes it's easier to control. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like that. And then I'm going to bring this one. Let me show you what's going on here. 
I'm going to bring this one, I'm going to fold it right here, and then I'm going to meet them in the middle, and then what I've created is a handle on the back. So either way you feel comfortable, um, go ahead and make your block like this with a little flapper on the end, or like this that's still got the soft flapper part, but you've created a handle to hold on to. And let me go ahead and demonstrate this. You can see that by having that little handle makes it a lot easier to sand. Now, as I'm sanding this, I'm paying close attention that I'm only sanding the top of the bondo. I'm only concentrating on the top of the filler. All right? I want to break that down. Remember, we, we built that up real high. All right? So what I'm doing is I'm just concentrating and I'm barely using any pressure and I'm trying not to sand any of the paint at all. And as you can see, eventually, sooner or later, it's going to go ahead and feather itself out. So I'm getting down to the point where it's almost flush. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just do a little bit more. We don't want to over sand that where we have to add more filler. And that feels pretty good. It's a little bit high on this side right here. We'll go ahead and put a little pressure right there. And then what we'll do is we'll take our sanding block. We're going to go ahead and remove our 180, or I'm sorry, our 80 grit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of 180. Um, and since this is such a small sanding block that I made, I'm going to fold it in half. And then that way I'll have that little piece in case I need it. And then we're going to take our sanding block. And then we're going to go ahead and make the flapper handle block. Because I think that works the best. And now with the 180, we're going to go ahead and apply just a little bit of pressure. And we're going to over sand just a little bit. And then, as I feel it, the dent is gone. It's all gone, and I have feathered that out and sanded it using 180 in this little small area. And now, I'm going to feel comfortable that when I blend my paint into this area here, it's not going to change the colors out here. Now, in most situations, such as this one here, we would not use a full-size spray gun. What we would do is we would go ahead and use our mini, our mini spray gun. Uh, this is a SATA right here. I've had this thing for about 35 years, 30 years. And it still works just as good today as it did the day I bought it. But uh, anyway, we would go ahead and use this. And we'd go ahead and feather that primer in there. And then once we feathered the primer in there, and you notice I didn't get down on this ledge here. I kept it right at that line just like I wanted. And then we'd go ahead and feather all that out and then we'd come back, wet sand it all down, and then we'd go ahead and blend our paint in. And then the way that I do it, all right, is I clear coat the whole door. All right, now you could go ahead and clear coat this and then use some blender to uh, bleed it in or possibly use some uh, reducer to blend the clear into the door, but I don't like to do that because uh, eventually down the line, in several years, what's going to happen, wherever you blended it, over here with your clear, it's going to start peeling and flaking off. Kind of put it, the guy in the same position of what's up there on that uh, hood. Uh, is this a big job? Not really. You can do this at home. This is the type of job that I recommend that uh, first-time painters that are just practicing and want to learn how to paint, this is what you ought to do. Uh, get a couple jobs like this where the paint's peeling on a car. Possibly one of your relatives or a friend that is willing to pay you a couple hundred bucks to do it for them. And practice your paint skills on a situation like this. Um, the roof was really horrendous on this. 
but I think we got it taken care of. That's a very big roof, by the way, just to let you know. This is a four-door diesel Ford truck, and it's a 4x4, four four, so you can imagine what's going on. But uh, if you are in the uh, market of wanting to learn how to do this, I recommend that you find somebody that has a car or a truck where the paint is peeling and cut a deal for them and tell them you'll paint the top half for them just so you can learn how to do it right. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete over here at DIY Auto School showing you and telling you tech tips and little secrets that will help you get down the road and learn how is it done? See you later. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.